face. The primary challenge that most companies will face is that they don't have a way to accurately measure brand building. So we need to find a way to measure that and provide actionable insight. And that is what we have created and dedicated ourselves to finding solutions that enable companies to use AI to create metrics that helps them grow their brand building effort. Building, we use uh, brand love um, as a metric that captures the positive relationship between a brand and its audience. And focusing on nurturing this, this connection, as you can see in the example, we can have that for any brand in the world, and then we can compare against each other. So is that we can use AI to analyze the language, which we have been doing for years now through natural language processing and sentiment analysis and semantic analysis. So that's more or less common. But what's new is that you can now also analyze images, which used to be, which used to be unstructured data. Using computer vision, you can analyze those as well and tie visual features to uh, sentiment. Before, we had to create a dashboard from scratch for every client, and that is a lot of time and a lot of effort invested in that, and also a lot of maintenance because they can eventually break and you have to fit, fix them. And the fourth challenge was the need for versatility within the dashboard because previous, da uh, previous platforms that we used we're not as good as accommodating to the very specific needs that we have um, and that will keep happening as technology evolves. So um, for the challenges that I've already just uh, mentioned, we have working with very large data sets, varied industry types, repeatedly deploying dashboards and a need for versatility. What, what about the solutions? Were you able to address these challenges with some solutions? Yeah, that's correct. So to streamline our process and reduce the repetitive work, we made a strategic uh, transition to building plotly based dashboards. So this allowed us visualizing data and automating the deployment process as well and addressing the multiple customer specific. Uh, um, so this shift is has uh, allowed us versatility, usability and ensures that we can meet all of these customer uses very efficiently. So we use Plotly to transform these complex and unstructured data into actual insights for our users. And these insights are derived from things such as NLP, computer vision, and we have recently started integrating large, large language models. This approach has significantly uh, enhanced the user engagement and the overall brand perception. I already talked about a bit about brand love and why that is so important for us because it captures the positive relationship between a brand and its audience. And you can see that daily here on this tab, on this chart where, for example, Netflix is very good at generating brand love. So you see it up here. And then the second one is Louis Vuitton and you can see that daily for every brand. Then there's of course a ranking because everyone wants to see how they stack up against their competitors. And then we have different views that and that gives us the ability to understand how this brand love is generated is it volume is it engagement how what about the platforms where am i performing where not and that's where you're going to see up here the tabs with pillar breakdown keyword analysis so looking at language and then image comparison looking at visuals Use the multi-page plugin uh, from plotly um, these pages are customer specific and sometimes they're user specific we have admin versions and all of that is done automatic, automatically on upload. Uh, this table contains the most engaging posts from all of these companies across platforms for the time that we filtered with. And it gives you the ability to click on the link and actually see the post in its natural platform, right? So this is a custom component that we have built. We call them graph containers. Uh, we have a figure in there or multiple and then some blurb explanation of how the user should understand what's happening in there. This allows us to build pages very quickly, modify them and customize them based off of uh, the customer's need. And that is why the filters are so important. You just mentioned like, hey, what brand am I comparing against? So you can filter for the brands that you have in your data set what brands you want to compare against. And then you can okay. select those here, but that's not the only filter that we have. We also have a date filter that is very important if you wanna look at stationality or platforms or even the pillars, which we're gonna discuss in a second. But 
filters are super important to be able to look at the data from different perspectives. Um, menu container is another thing that we use almost on every page. And it's one of my favorite things about using Plotly. Um, in our previous um, frameworks, we've had to populate these dropdowns manually not only in the front end, but sometimes also in the back end. Uh, using Plotly, we can, these dropdowns are added depending on what data is shown in the page. Uh, they're populated automatically and we don't have to worry that, about that anymore. We use a custom NLP pipeline and all of this data is generated on um, app load. So when we collect data, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly based off of the client, and then we deploy uh, once a week or once a month, all of this data is generated and then you can see it in these pages. Then we go into the nitty gritty, if you will, where we start analyzing language. So for keywords, we had a love and hate relationship with keywords at the beginning because every, everyone talks about keywords, but in a different sense. So our goal was to drive differentiation. How can we help a brand understand what language they can use to be more unique because that's very important for differentiation. This is how we came up with this relevance score, which actually gives you the a number for how unique a term is to you. So, the uh, and it's great that we use Plotly because then we can integrate um, background callbacks and the user uh, experience has improved significantly since we did that. So the current image analysis that you see here is done using Google Vision to detect labels of images. Uh, we combine this data with other metrics such as engagement uh, and we extract valuable insights through that. We're also currently working on a version that uses AI generated image captions and that will allow enhanced image understanding and user interaction in the future. Not all clients have exactly the same needs. So we have the, to have the flexibility to create dashboards that are different. So here's another example. This is for a Peruvian company that's called Brandtech. And they're not even interested in brands, they're interested in people. So they are using this to track influencers. And of course the visualization is different. We have different fields, we have different um, information that needs to be visualized. In, and they have even their own brand colors, so it looks different. Is that all of these dashboards are based off of one code base. Um, and then we use Plotly, which gives us the flexibility of conditionally showing different components and different pages, depending on the customer's need. The technical details of that, we use a Langchain agent with a Python REPL. Um, it has access to Pandas data frames of the post comments and the such. Um, it also has Inclanter knowledge base and that allows it access to like the perspective of our consultants as well as semantic search. Um, for the memory, we use Redis and for the vector stores and semantic search, we use Pinecone. First thing that we're working on is the generative AI part. So we have a vast amount of data with great insight, but we still need a lot of human brain power to turn that into like actionables right? Creativity. We still need a lot of creativity and we don't want to get rid of that, but we want to make it easier. And that's where the generative AI is coming in. So our next goal is to incorporate a way to chat with your data like we did. Regarding challenges, the challenges faced by Krant included measuring return on investment from, from, from brand building, uh, accommodating customers in their variety industry needs, and spending excessive time with repetitive processes. So then came the solution, and as a solution, Krant turned to Dash Enterprise for interactive data apps custom built for each customer. They also gained actionable insight through NLP, semantic anal analysis, and computer vision, as well as enhanced data visualization. And choosing Dash Enterprise also led to a 28 hours of time saved per week, as well as a 4x increase in interactive plots.